Hello everybody and welcome to part 13, I think, something like that, of my uh, Fremel 6 hard mode chapter guide. Today we're going to be looking at chapter 11a. Uh, as I've said many times at this point, it is my favorite chapter in the game. I just think there's a lot going on and it's uh, an interesting chapter with a lot of different sort of decision points. Uh, I think having a plan is really useful, whereas a lot of Fremel chapters tend to kind of uh, not really require that of you. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I just really like this chapter. Uh, you'll see a lot of the things that we're going to be doing are fairly similar to chapter, uh, 10B, and that's why I kind of called them parallels, uh, specifically with two units we're going to be recruiting. It's fairly similar to that chapter. Um, so yeah, let's just get right into it. As far as the, uh, the preps are concerned, let's talk about who we need to bring. So it's fairly similar to that. We don't need Lilene anymore because on this route, we have already recruited Gonzalez. Uh, we do need Clarion, because just like 10B, we are going to be recruiting Klein here. Um, just like that as well, you can bring Shanna, and I will bring Shanna. She's also fairly helpful for a couple other situations. Um, so those are the characters that we need. Now, for other characters, let's go over a little bit of um, the strategy we're going to be using here. So basically, uh, Klein is going to be coming from here on turn 5. So we want Clarion uh, and some units to go down here and basically get ready to hopefully... Uh, recruit him to turn after he shows up so that's number one number two is going over here and getting through this wall this is important for a few reasons number one is you're actually really close to the boss one of the things i like about this chapter is there's a lot of different ways to uh handle it you could actually just disregard everything and go over here and get through this wall and then kill the boss and in the chapter now you'd be missing a lot of items i certainly wouldn't recommend that but you can do that it is still really useful to do this for a few reasons. Uh, number one is that these units will, if you get through the wall, aggro up to you, which is really important because the Klein recruit down here can be really annoying even if he does move, uh, if all these units start to aggro down to the south. So it's really useful to get through here. Also, as I mentioned when we were doing uh, 10B, the bandits on this chapter are a bit more... Uh, they come from different locations as opposed to that chapter where it's pretty easy to get to the point where you can um, protect the villages. One will spawn from here and one will spawn from here. And if you don't go through here, it's going to be pretty easy for them to destroy this house. I think there also might be a robe in here. I'm not 100% sure on that. But either way, you, you need to keep all the houses alive from Heroes Crest, just like in 10B. So sending some units up here, getting to this wall as quickly as possible, and doing this is also very important. So those are our two um, big strategies, I suppose. Normally, I would say in Fire Emblem games, it's kind of a bad idea to split your uh, army, even if the chapter seems to sort of want it. Uh, but in this situation, it's extremely important. So that's going to be our strategy. Now, there's a few different things that, uh, a few different useful things that we can utilize here. I mentioned this uh, geese a couple of times. Geese is an absolutely terrible unit, but geese does come with a brave axe, and he can use it immediately. If you have a unit that can use the brave axe, obviously geese is, you know, useless. <laughs> but we have no other brave weapons, and getting through um, the walls can be pretty annoying. The brave weapon actually doubles the walls, which is kind of bizarre, but also works for some reason. So, Geese can actually be fairly useful at getting through this wall, although he does get absolutely destroyed by this killer bow guy, so you gotta be a little bit uh, worried about that. So, I'm gonna be bringing Geese with the uh, brave axe. I think we're going to not deploy Deke here, and we'll bring... So that can be kind of useful. The other thing that I'll mention uh, before we get going here is these two houses. There's a wall here. You can go around this way, um, but this chapter is a lot about timing, and we'll talk about that more as we progress. Um, so it can be kind of annoying, actually, to get these houses. One of the strategies that you can use is taking a unit, like, for example, a Zealot, and going down this way. This can be a little bit worrisome because this guy's a Halberd, which does, let's see, 10 might, so that would be, what, 20 might... Yeah, 30 might. So as long as we put uh, a sword on him, we should be able to do this with Zealot. So having a plan for these two houses is kind of nice. This guy's a longbow, so you can actually kind of bait him and attack him through the wall, and then just have Zealot fight this guy. Um, or potentially you can do it with Thanny later in the chapter, because you can like have her be here, get the house, go back up, and then go over here and do the same thing, and avoid the halberd guy. There's a couple of different strategies you can, you can use to get those houses. But just like in the last chapter, getting all the houses does provide us a hero's crest, so that is going to be extremely useful. Um, so this is probably the team I'm going to be using, or something like this. Uh, I'll finish up my preps, and then we'll get the chapter started. Alright, so I've just finished my preps and started the chapter. Um, you'll notice that there is a new character that we refer here. That is Lalum. She is our dancer. Um, so 
If you know anything about Fire Emblem games, you probably know what a dancer is. Basically, dancers allow units to move again. So, for example, here, um, we're going to have Rucker go here. And then we get to have Rucker move again. And if this seems really powerful, it's because it is. Um, dancers are basically just like the best class in any Fire Emblem game. Lalum is absolutely awesome. She doesn't have anything else like... Um, like in Fire Emblem 7, for example, they have like different songs they can play, but it really doesn't matter. Uh, she's absolutely amazing and actually can make this uh, a lot easier. So what I would recommend for this chapter and what I'm currently doing is having Lance, Alan, Lou, and then I'm going to have Roy as well all go here along with Geese, because like I said, I want to show off what he can do with the wall. Um, and basically try to aggro these units and get over there as quickly as possible. And then have Rucker lead the charge uh, down here along with basically the rest of your units. So like, for example, Shin, I want to make sure he's out of this guy's range. Um, Clearing, as I said, because she wants to be down there for Klein. I, Brock Gonzalez, um, and then Zealot. I know, as I said, when we started this, that you can do uh, the thing where you go down here with Zealot. I'm going to have him just go up here, and I'll probably break through the wall, something like that. Uh, or maybe I'll have him sneak around. Maybe I'll do the Thanny thing. I'm not really sure yet, but I'm going to have him do that. Um, the Thanny could join them as well. So, yeah, Lalum makes this quite a bit easier because even though you're splitting up your units, having Lalum, um, basically, like, he, she just doubles everything. So, like, Ruck can move twice or, like, Clarion can heal twice. It's also really nice for the Klein recruit because you can potentially use her to extend a little bit more if you're struggling with that. She's just really amazing. Um, so, as I said at the top of this, I would highly recommend splitting your forces. We do want Rucker to eventually wind up killing the boss so we can time this kind of all correctly. But we need the units, Klein included, to move up to the north at some point anyways um, for some other stuff. And Lalum needs to talk to a unit that's going to appear uh, right here. It's somewhere around this house, like here or something. So everyone's going to kind of be everywhere on this chapter. So I wouldn't worry too much about who starts where. Just make sure that you get clearing here and you get through this wall um, as early as you can in the chapter. Um, so yeah, I'm going to be skipping around a little bit like always, and uh, I'll probably come back probably around where Klein shows up, uh, unless something weird happens. <laughs> okay, I just wanted to really quick come back and just mention this guy does have a killer bow, so while I highly recommend um, trying to deal with these units through the the wall before you break the wall, um, just be aware that this guy does have a killer bow. It can be kind of dangerous. Um, in our case, obviously, we have the Lance Allen support, so it's really not that bad, but the crits still could happen, so just be aware of that. Um, but, yep. Okay, so in our situation, uh, Geese isn't the most useful uh, person in the world, but certainly for situations where it's a little bit more difficult to get through the wall, I just want to again point out how useful it is to actually use him. He can deal 40 damage to the wall, whereas, as you can see, even our stronger units are dealing like 24, Alan, you know, 23, things of that nature. So I will use him to break through the wall just so I can show it off, but Geese is certainly not necessary here. It's just something kind of cool that you can do that's fairly helpful. And honestly, Geese never really accomplishes anything, so it's kind of nice to have him do something, you know? <laughs> um, but yeah, it can be kind of helpful. Alright, so Klein just showed up. Um, now, I will sort of retroactively change something that I said in the in the previous video. I always thought, because as you can see, um, Klein did not move here, whereas his units did. Now, I always thought that Klein not moving was a... Um, glitch with the game. Apparently this is not the case. Uh, actually a user by the name of Jack, I'm going to butcher your last name, I'm sorry, Gon, Gon Kelvez? I'm sorry about that, but he actually mentioned uh, in one of my comments, in one of my uh, YouTube videos, that I guess units have a certain chance of moving, and with Klein and D, it's actually only a 50% chance to move. Um, so, I just wanted to mention that there is, it, number one, that's a lot higher than I thought, because uh, I feel like he does move a lot, but maybe I just notice it more. Um, but big shout out to him, and for anyone else, if you ever notice anything that I say wrong, feel free to always leave it in the comments. Uh, I like to play these games a lot, but I am not, you know, all-knowing. Uh, but yes, unfortunately, we did not have Klein move, which is kind of a big deal, because normally Klein would be about here right now, which means that with Lalum support, actually even without Lalum support, we could uh, recruit. So I think what we're going to try to do is see if we can't get a recruit for next turn. I'm not really sure how we're going to do this. Um, I think the strategy may be to try to get these archers to uh, go north a little bit and then hope he moves next turn and we can get Clarion to recruit. So I think I'm going to have Rucker go up here. 
Um, I'll figure out some formation stuff and we'll see if we can get this to work. But yeah, as I said, if it happened normally, you can very easily recruit Klein. And normally what I do is after recruiting Klein, I have him visit this house because the bandits are about to show up um, to kind of prevent them from destroying that house. But obviously, if Glenn doesn't move, you need to kind of play it by ear. And hopefully, again, he moves um, this turn. So as I said, I'll do a little bit with the formations and then I'll come back and hopefully Klein will move next turn. <laughs> Okay, so unfortunately I messed up the uh, last playthrough. I still want to keep in everything that I just talked about because uh, it is... I do want to give a shout out to Jack just like I did. And um, I also want to just mention, as I said, that sometimes client doesn't move and you do sort of have to change uh, how you handle things. But I actually messed up um, with Roy. I just like didn't see a shaman and he doubled him. So I actually had to redo the chapter. And thankfully we got much better AI out of Klein. Uh, he did decide to move. Which means that we should be able to uh, get clearing in position um, to recruit. Uh, this is one other thing that I want to mention, which is that the reason that we really want to recruit Klein without killing any of his archers, which we would have had to have done uh, with the last the last time um, with the non move with Klein, is that they are going to become green just on the last just like on the last chapter. And if we keep them all alive, we get a rise bolt, which um, can be extremely useful. So we're going to go ahead and recruit Klein here. Uh, another thing that I wanted to talk about was Klein himself, because I actually realized after I recorded, um, <laughs> actually I just realized that it's playing the uh, the winning music, because there's actually a lot more to this chapter, but there's only three units left in the chapter other than the boss, which is kind of funny, because all these became green. Um, but I do want to talk about Klein, because, or Klein, because I didn't last time, uh, even though we did recruit him on uh, chapter 10b. Klein is an awesome unit. As you can see, his stats are really decent for this stage in the game. Uh, he'll be a nice sort of, I like to call them tempo units, units that like won't really scale into the late game, but are really nice in the mid game. Klein's kind of a, he almost surpasses it in a way because uh, I've said this before, but I think archers are actually quite good in this game because um, his stats are good enough for the mid game. They're not really good enough for the end game, but the end game has a lot of wyverns and effective damage in this game is, I think it's like three times. So it's really high. He can also use silver bows and actually comes with one at base, which means even in the end game when you're fighting Wyvern Lords that are like really annoying to kill, Klein still deals awesome damage with his silver bow and 15 strength. So, you know, obviously one of the things with uh, pre promotes in this game is that their growths are generally pretty bad, but his uh, harbor bonuses certainly help him. And as I said, a unit that has the stats to compete in the mid game and the uh, effective damage to compete in the late game is really awesome. Uh, Klein is really, really strong. So I highly recommend using him. Um, I, I will say it's not like a necessity to deploy him. And in fact, I don't a lot of the time, depending on um, how many units I'm training and how many units I have access to. There's a lot of units in Fire Emblem 6. Um, but Klein is a really good one. And then, like I said last time, um, what I would recommend doing with Klein is just coming over here right away and visiting this village. You don't have to do this because Klein does want to get up to the north as quickly as possible to get the uh, Tate recruitment underway. But as I said, next turn, the brigands are going to come from here and from here. So getting these villages in particular visited very quickly is extremely useful. So that would be my recommendation. The next section of this chapter that we're going to have to be worrying about is the Echidna recruit, who's the next character that's going to, that's going to uh, appear. She is going to be appearing... Um, let me see... On turn 8, actually Thea, Thea appears first. She appears in turn 7 up here, but we're not actually going to be doing anything with her until she gets way over here. Echidna is going to be uh, coming on turn 8, and Echidna is really important to understand exactly where she comes and what enemies come with her. So she's going to be coming from this tile right here, and then on enemy phase, there's going to be an, a unit right here, a unit right here, and a unit right here. That's really important to know this because Lalum needs to recruit Echidna. But if you have Lalum like right here, for example, the fighters are just going to kill her before you can actually recruit Echidna. Now we'll talk about Echidna and her potential to die on the turn she appears when she does appear. Hopefully she doesn't die. Um, but just make sure that you're aware of where the units are coming out. This can be a bit tedious, but you don't want to use lose like a healer or Lalum that's going to recruit um, in the midst of that. So I'll probably come back when we're ready to recruit Echidna uh, and we'll talk about that a little more in depth. Okay, so this turn we're going to be setting up for Echidna. Now, 
in looking at where the enemies are going to spawn one is actually spawning exactly where this archer is so i'm not 100 percent sure what's going to happen to him um so i guess we're going to find out together now as i said thea did show up up here so klein is going to need to start heading up there uh one of the other recommendations i would make you can potentially like try to get thea to aggro down here um but getting units away from here so that thea and all of our units aggro over here is really nice and i would recommend that now, as I said, losing an archer potentially is not the end of the world, uh, but we do want to prepare for Echidna coming. So, I have Rucker down here for um, one of the units. Let me just get out my fancy uh, thing. He's going to stand right here. Shin will hang out here because there's going to be a unit spawning here. Uh, a unit spawning here, and then, yeah, the archer's in position. And I guess what I'm going to do is something like have Lou go here and Lance go here and then I guess I'll have Roy go like here and I'm gonna hope that either he doesn't spawn at all or he spawns something like here we'll see how that goes though I'm not a hundred percent sure how this is gonna play out um I guess I'll uh, I'm gonna heal Alan I guess I'll just let it play and we'll all kind of find out together <laughs> but yeah this echidna the enemy phase echidna stuff can be really annoying so just be aware um of how sort of tedious this can be. Uh, I would recommend this on basically any chapter you do, but I would highly recommend looking up to see like where reinforcements spawn and when they spawn, those sorts of things, so that you don't have any surprises, unless you're trying to play it blind, uh, but then I don't know if you should be watching a, a guide. <laughs> but no, yeah, so this in particular is really important to know um, what's about to happen. And then like I said, Lalum is the recruit. I don't know if any of them have hand axes, so we'll have her stand behind a little bit and not clearing over there. And I guess we'll see. I think Shin's in a decent spot. Oh, I also, like I said, I visited these houses with uh, Shanna. There's a few different things that you can do with her. Like I said, she can be up here to have Tate become a green unit. Um, otherwise, you can ever kind of skirt the edge here and basically visit the house and then canto over here so that the Halberd guy never needs to be interacted with. Uh, I would recommend that. I think it's a good strategy. Oh, wow. Okay. So he <laughs> popped out all the way up there. That's uh, interesting. I think we should be okay unless Roy is potentially in some danger. I guess my Lou is also potentially in some danger. So normally I skip around, but let's all find out if I lose Lou here. Um, in spots like this, I would not recommend putting uh, frail characters like Lou in situations like this. But obviously the percentages are pretty low. Risking 220s is something you never like really want to do. And if I was doing an Iron Man, I probably would have found a better way. Uh, to have done that, but uh, 220 is really not the end of the world. Um, it looks like he just wants to attack Saul. Okay, that's perfectly fine. So one of the other things that I will say, unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to show it because well, none of them attacked Echidna, but um, Echidna, who we're about to recruit, is unfortunately weighed down quite a bit by this steel axe that she comes with. She gets weighed down six. Which means that even though her 18 speed looks really good, it actually means she only has 12 speed. The, the point of this, especially coupled with her low defense, is that if all three of those brigands attack her and hit her, they can kill her. Um, this doesn't happen that high a percentage of the time, but unlike Klein from the uh, um, a previous time where he could potentially die, uh, you can't like do any quick recruits of Echidna. She has to be here and she can potentially get attacked. So, but obviously we get out of it without too many problems, so let's recruit her. And talk about Echidna. So as you can see, Echidna's stats do actually look quite impressive. 18 speed and 13 strength are quite nice. Echidna's biggest problem is the same problem that um, Isadora has from Fire Emblem 7, where unfortunately when you make a character, like in that case a Paladin, in this case a Hero, that can use weapons like Lances and Axes, but then give them really low constitution, it just means that that speed is actually just kind of fake. Now, she can use swords, so you can absolutely equip swords with her, and she can use them just fine. But basically, any axe and any stronger sword will weigh her down, which is really unfortunate. She's absolutely not a bad unit, so don't don't take me as uh, saying that. Um, if she's not being weighed down, she can double pretty consistently at this point, and her strength uh, allows her to deal pretty good damage. Even though her defense is pretty low, she still has pretty good HP. She's 100% a tempo unit. Uh, unlike Klein, she doesn't get super strong in the late game. But she does do a really good job of offering uh, some decent offense and some decent bulk uh, for the next couple of chapters. So I think Echidna is a really solid unit. I would highly recommend deploying her if you need that. Um, 
but yeah, not the strongest unit. And as you can see, we get to see the uh, not glitch uh, happen again. Tate did not move. So at this stage, in order to recruit Tate, I could do something kind of fancy here and try to get her to go south. But I think it's pretty likely that I'm just going to have to uh, kill some of these Pegasus Knights, especially if I still want a chance at the Orion's Bolt. And I think that's probably what I'm going to wind up doing. Or maybe I'll rescue some of these archers. Um, but yeah, I'll deal with this stuff. And then when we're ready to recruit Tate, I'll come back and we'll talk about her as a character. Okay, so unfortunately I have just had to start killing uh, Tate's units. Um, the nice thing is that some of them do have javelins. And potentially we could have let them, uh, the one range guys attack Shin and the two range guys attack uh, like Alan or somebody else. But it is kind of scary for these archers. Um... Now, obviously, as, is, as I've said before, perhaps if we've done something better with Shanna, there are absolutely ways to get all the uh, bonus items from this chapter. But this is actually one of the reasons that I like the chapter as much as I do, because I like the fact that many different players are going to end this chapter with many different uh, items. So some people are going to get the Hero's Crest, the Iron's Bolt, or the Elysian Whip, and some people are going to get none or two or one or just some amount of uh, those items. So I, I've tried to do my best to show how to get as many as you can get and as i said there are 100 percent better ways to have gotten uh, more items um but again it's not super important to get all the items possible it's more important to get the characters and i hope this at least done a decent representation of how you can potentially get um all the side objectives so i should be able to recruit tate next turn and we'll come back and talk about her when i do that Okay, so now Tate has... She tried to kill one of the archers, but unfortunately... Well, fortunately for us, she couldn't. So now we can talk to her with Klein and recruit Tate. So again, I, I didn't talk about Tate last time. Uh, both Tate and Klein do have the... I believe the exact same stats and levels as they do on the B route. So if you're curious how they are on the B route, just... Um, I'm going to talk about them, them both right now and it'll apply to that. So Tate is a decent level light Pegasus with hardman bonuses, which actually makes her quite strong. Unfortunately, Tate has kind of the same problem as Shanna, where there's an incredibly good um, flyer in this game, that being Milady. Uh, and a flyer without the Delphi shield is just, it, they're a lot weaker. It's a lot harder to play around with them um, as opposed to being able to use the Delphi shield. And unfortunately, Milady just kind of has to use the Delphi shield uh, if you're using the strongest weapons. Now, that certainly doesn't make Tate bad. As you can see, her bases are actually quite good. Um, and she'll wind up being a totally fine unit. But yeah, unfortunately, Milady just really it's just much better at using that delphi shield um but again i i don't know if i'd necessarily recommend not uh training tate in fact if you're going to Ilya, i think both her and shanna can be really useful and of course you want to train them because that's how you go to Ilya. uh but yeah she she's an okay unit i would say uh probably not as good as shanna at the end of the day so the final part of this mi mission is to kill the boss as you can see some units have shown up here my recommendation would be to finish this chapter as quick as you can. Normally what I do is actually have Rucker already attacking the boss. This is one of the things that Rucker's really good at is uh, boss killing, as we've been saying um, this whole time. Unfortunately, I've been a little bit a little bit bad at the end of this chapter here and haven't, um, haven't quite done everything that I want to do uh, as quickly as I want to do it. So we're a little bit behind schedule, but I think we're, we're going to drop Alan into support range here and then we're going to have... Uh, Lance start getting some nice hits here and Rucker can hopefully uh, follow up and do some stuff next turn. The reinforcements, as I said, there's some calves from here and there's going to be a paladin and some calves from down here. Um, you can pretty much handle this however you want. Usually, uh, if you notice throughout this playthrough, I've been basically saying that we just want to bait out reinforcements and the safest way to handle chapters is to just wait them out. This chapter can be that as well. You can certainly put somebody here and handle these guys pretty easily. And Lance and Alan could probably handle all these guys fairly easily as well. But I kind of like the idea of finishing this chapter quickly. This is just kind of the way that I like to play the chapter. So, um, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to try to kill the boss as quick as we can. And then hopefully um, be able to end the chapter with Roy next turn. I guess I didn't really talk about the boss. We'll talk about him a little bit. He is a bishop um, with really high resistance. But thankfully he is fairly frail and also fairly slow. Uh, this doesn't weigh him down at all, but 12 speed is not the best in the world, and even though we did use um, Lance to do a decent amount of damage, I do kind of want to show off just how good Rucker is at killing bosses, and specifically this boss. You can see just how much uh, crit he has, and he does pretty darn good damage, even without supports, um, which is really nice. Okay, well, he's kind of failed me in my display of just how good Rucker is, but that's okay. We'll give him another shot here. Hopefully he can, uh, he can finish off the boss, and we can seize this turn. 
There we go. Finish with the crit. Finish strong. Um, so yeah, so that was chapter uh, 10A. As I said, I really, or sorry, 11A. I really like this chapter. I know it was a little bit sloppy, just like my uh, playthrough of um, 10B. But that's kind of one of the things that I like about this chapter. This chapter almost never feels like smooth, if that makes sense. And that might be like kind of frustrating. And this chapter certainly can be. But there are so many chapters in Fire Emblem that do just feel smooth. Um, and so I think this chapter is really unique because it's kind of hard. It, it's actually genuinely really hard to get all of the um, these sort of bonus items, especially on an Iron Man, where you can't reset over and over again. So I love that chapter. I'm a big fan. Uh, I hope you enjoyed as always, and I will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching, everybody.